Good morning, friends. Are you having a great week so far? Good morning, everyone. So before we get to it, I want to do a special thank you because I got a surprise in the mail yesterday from our subscriber, Visual Keto. And my goodness, thank you so much. So I know you guys will be very shocked, but uh, they really nailed it. Uh, they have sent me coffee. Uh, it is a local roaster from their area in Iowa. So I'm super excited, and guess what we'll try the next couple uh, Sunday live streams. So this one is their breakfast blend. It's a medium roast, and it says it's their signature blend, so I'm super excited. I usually like breakfast blends too, so looking forward to it. Uh, it oh, I just got to read through. It has such nice stuff on it. We'll go through it in the live stream. And then the other one is their... Uh, Shot Tower Espresso. It's a dark roast, so mm, sounds delightful, doesn't it? How exciting. I don't know if I can wait for this one. I might have to open this and uh, ha try it tomorrow, which is a big uh, holiday for me and also an anniversary for me. Uh, so our whole family is getting together tonight and having a hot pot, and then tomorrow uh the uh, couple of us are all going to uh, texas roadhouse then we don't have to do nothing and we have extra days off so it's kind of an awesome week for us uh i took tomorrow off from work but now i'm thinking i'd better get to work because i gotta get everything for the hot pot prepared shaving cabbage uh thin slicing up my uh, pork chop i already did the ribeye mm so looking forward to it yesterday i made the bone broth it is mm, it is so good like i might steal some and make it part of my meal one i don't know no i probably shouldn't do that save it for what it's worth and then the leftovers will be delicious it's one of the cool things we'll talk about hot pot later today because there won't be a video tomorrow there's not i'm not going on a morning uh sunrise walk uh Sometimes it's a hike, but obviously I'm still not 100% on the ankle, which is annoying. So I don't want to do anything too crazy, plus stupid cold. So uh, sunrise, solstice, we're going to then Texas Roadhouse. So I'm going to have a ribeye, no surprise there. When you are keto and you go to Texas Roadhouse, how do you get your sides? Do you do the loaded broccoli? Do you have the Caesar salad with no croutons uh, and not worry about the dirty dressing? Do you ask them to only use salt and pepper on the steak so you don't have their sugar-fied seasoning? Uh, let's talk about going to steakhouses in the comments. Leave it. Owen Dyson says, good morning. He's upset because I came to work and he's still downstairs. He likes to come to work. See ya. Bye-bye. By the way, so meal one, I've got too much today to be worrying about food until our big meal this afternoon. I did a keto chow creamy, which I had prepped in the freezer. It's that new sticky bun flavor that they have. So it just looks like a, oh, it's just white. There's nothing special about it, but uh, check out the koozie though. We haven't talked about this in a long time. Uh, Sharon made this for me and the link to her embroidered goods is down in the description so uh, if you like pints of ice cream or you have a ninja creamy with these lovely pints you definitely want one of these check it out is that nice or what so that way your fingers don't get too chilly uh, if you don't have a ninja creamy and you feel like something for the holidays this is the texture so you can see it's super, super nice, lovely, perfect soft serve. So, and again, I just used my keto chow replacement meal as the base for it. So 
nothing, nothing special. I didn't add anything to it. I know a lot of people get like really elaborate in the recipes. You know what? I just used some heavy cream, the keto chow, and some water. Um, I don't like all those gums. I don't know. For some reason, it's definitely unappealing to me in the texture. Uh, I don't find that it makes a difference when I add the allulose or not. So uh, I just go plain. So, and it seems to work out great. It's also, I've got my little space heater on here in my office, so it's super warm. So my ice cream is melting quickly. So I'm going to go eat that and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the hot pot stuff. It's, I've got a one track mind today. Okay, everyone. So I said I would share with you a little bit of information about hot pots because I've been talking about it quite a lot. And it's what we are having for our big holiday meal. Uh, I'm interested in knowing what kind of traditions you celebrate or not celebrate or think fun things you do with family. I think that would be great to hear about. But in our family for special occasions, we love hot pot. Uh, if you don't know what a hot pot is, it is a uh, an electric pot most of the time. Uh, and I probably should have brought mine up here to show you, but it's already getting dressed up for the table and all that stuff. But it usually has uh, sections for a couple types of broth. Or if you have smaller induction burners and smaller uh, steel pots or clay pots or other things like that, uh, sometimes you have that sitting in front of you. And you have your suit, your broth that you're bringing up to a, a simmer or a boil in there. And in your bowl is where you would have your noodles and maybe a, a couple of little miscellaneous, uh, no cook sort of vegetables. Like I have some super thin shaved cabbage. We'll probably put that on top of the noodles. And here's why. So you have your central pot that has all of the broth in it. This is a family event or a friends group event, or well, it's a group activity. Hot pots are group activities. So uh, everybody, and then of course on the side is where you have your plates that have thinly shaved meats. All kinds of meats are available. The sky's the limit. And of course your vegetables. So, and there are tons and tons and tons of options for vegetables. So all of that goes in and of course you have, so you have your personal bowl, uh, you take a, you have a, a, your chopsticks that you use for cooking and then your soup spoon that you use for eating. Uh, it's better if you don't mix them. Sometimes there are central cooking chopsticks. So that kind of varies around, uh, depends on what you need for cleanliness. Cause obviously you don't want people putting stuff in their mouth and then back into the central pot you all share. But sometimes if you are a close family, that's not really a big deal, uh, is boiling. So we have central, we have central chopsticks, uh, that are for cooking and then you, and then you bring it over and you use your personal chopsticks and spoons. So that was what we have. Uh, anyways, so a little bit of history about hot pot is that this is not like some new thing, even though it's, uh, currently more trendy right now. It's actually like thousands of years old. Uh, it originated in China. So we haven't had a good nerd stuff in a while, right? So this is fun. We had our uh, depression era Southern food. Now we're talking about uh, old Asian cultural foods. Uh, however, so thousands of years old and it's hard to say where it originated because like everything else, a lot of areas like to claim it. Now, however, it's generally assumed that the tradition came from uh, the Mongol warriors and horsemen because they camped outside and they would have this dinner together circled around the pot on the fire. Uh, it was a good way for them to keep warm and, while they were eating at the same time. Of course, uh, that's where the controversy comes in. Some claim that it was uh, invented by the boatmen in Chongqing. So who were looking for a cheap and simple way to cook. Uh, Sichuan hot pot was recorded in the Rhapsody of the Three Capitals. So uh, maybe it was that po a poet whose name I cannot remember. Uh, you just don't know. It's so questionable. And so, and hot pot in some form or another is available in many Asian regions. So 
uh, from Mongolia to China to Korea. Um, and did I say Japan? I don't know if I said Japan, but Japan, Japan as well. It's a it's a common style of eating throughout Asia. So yeah, that's basically it. You take your stuff, uh, you take a, a little piece of your of whatever you're choosing, and you put it into the broth, and then you scoop it out with a little strainer and put it into your uh, dish. You have a, a ladle, so you take some of the broth and you pour that over, which is what keeps your noodles warm, and anything like that shaved cabbage or bamboo sprouts that you've put in there also gets warmed up and uh, softened by the broth. Let's see. What else? So also you should know that uh, there are regional differences in the hot pot, so sometimes it tastes different, and that's okay, that's awesome. So you flavor your broth, and that's why I say you don't have to worry about being like authentic. I ketify it for myself, but you can, uh, so, and the, if you go to an Asian market and the soups aisles, there are tons and tons of packets and flavorings for soups. Don't buy those. Do not, because they are full of ingredients that if you are a ketogenic eater, they will not do good things for you. They are often heavy carb-laden sauces, so you do, in fact, need to make your own. And if there's a flavor profile you want, uh, feel free to reach out, let me know, and I will help you ketify it. Can we do all of them? No, but can we do a lot of them? You betcha. Uh, we are actually going to just do two, even though they're both beef-based. So I will uh, heat up our broth. We're going to do regular beef broth on one side, and then on the other side, we're making the hot and spicy. I will be mixing in a little bit of uh, the garlic chili sauce in the hot and spicy one, and also another splash of the uh, coconut aminos and a teeny bit of fish sauce in both sides. So there's lots of options. Um, trying to think what else. So mm, I guess really the most important thing that you should know about Hot Pot is that it's about uh, camaraderie, sharing with friends and family, uh, sitting around and talking and sharing. So yeah, it's a bonding experience, which is why we enjoy it so much for our special occasion family dinners. So just trying to think. Oh, you should know I think that's everything that I've got today. I know that there are, are lots more hot pot facts, but today is not my day to remember them all. Thought I did pretty good. You can let me know what I forgot and correct me in the places where I got it wrong. We may as well, sure, add some comments. And by the way, if you are not subscribed to this Radical Geek YouTube channel, we nerded up on the regular, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And then hit the little bell icon so that you are notified every time I upload or go live. So that's the YouTube spiel that I almost always forget to do that I'm told I should do every video. But it's all right. It's working out anyways. So also, if you get a chance to travel and you are in China, you should know that uh, Beijing is a fantastic place to try out some hot pots. Uh, go for it. I encourage it, do it. Also in the United States, hot pot is uh, currently quite trendy. So there should be hot pot restaurants in your area. And oftentimes it's super cool because a lot of them uh, have like little robots to bring your foods to you. So it's super fun. It's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great, I love it. Every single bit of it. So, and look at that. I didn't even bring up my convention or did I? I forget. Well, if not, I'm bringing it up now. Don't forget, if you are in anywhere nearby and you like going to conventions, you should join me at OhioCon. We're going to have a great year. See ya. Bye-bye.